Welcome to Electron Line. So far in this series, we've been looking at simple harmonic motion with a spring and an object attached to the spring, but there's other ways in which we can have simple harmonic motion, such as a simple pendulum. A simple pendulum is defined as an object connected to either a rod or a string in such a way that the rod or a string has no mass, or we can ignore the mass of the rod or the string, and the length of the pendulum is defined as the point where the pendulum attached attach to the top down to the center of mass of the object at the bottom of that string or that, that rod. The mass of the pendulum is typically the mass of the object on the rod or the string, and as long as the fluctuations, the oscillations back and forth away from the equilibrium point are small, such that the angle of theta is relatively small, in other words, when the sine of theta is very similar to the tangent of theta, then we can use this as an example of simple harmonic motion. Once the angle becomes a little bit bigger, then we find that it starts deviating a little bit from the normal uh, way in which simple harmonic motion uh, takes place. The way we solve the pendulum problems typically is to find either the frequency or the period through finding the radial frequency. The radial frequency omega is equal to the square root of g over l. Now in this case, omega is not the square root of k over m. It's the square root of g over l. It's the force of gravity that brings the pendulum back to the equilibrium point. That's why we have a g in the numerator here. It also depends on the length of the pendulum. The longer the pendulum, the slower the motion of the, of the pendulum. Or the longer the period of oscillation might be a better way to express it. Notice that the frequency, or therefore the period, has nothing to do with the mass of the pendulum. It's simply related to the force of gravity and the length of the pendulum. Let's go ahead now and solve this problem. We're trying to find the frequency and the period when the length is 1.5 meters, and assuming we're on the surface of the Earth with g equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Since we know that omega is equal to 2 pi times the oscillatory frequency, we can then say that the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times omega, and since omega is the square root of g over l, we can then say that the frequency can be found by taking 1 over 2 pi and multiplying that times the square root of g over l. Knowing that, let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. In this case, we have the frequency is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of g, which is 9.8, divided by L, which is 1.5. Notice that the frequency will be in terms of hertz, or 1 divided by seconds. 9.8 divided by 1.5. And then we take the square root of that, we divide that by 2, and divide by pi. And we get 0 0.407 seconds. So frequency is equal to, uh, that would be 0 0.407 per second, should be seconds, but hertz, that would be 1 over seconds, so we can also write frequency equal to 0 0.407 per second. That means oscillations per second. A complete oscillation is from the maximum amplitude to the other side and back, which would be one complete oscillation. To find the period, we can simply take the inverse of that. The period is equal to the inverse of the frequency, the general equation, therefore, is when we take the inverse of that, that would be period is equal to 2 pi times 1 over omega. Since omega is equal to the square root of g over L, the inverse omega would be the square root of L over g. The period can then be written as 2 pi times the square root of L. Oops, I was going to write the wrong thing down. L divided by g. This is the general equation for the period of a pendulum. And here we go. This is the general equation of the frequency of the pendulum. We could plug in L and G here, take the square root, multiply times 2 pi, or we can come over here, realizing that the period is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. That's equal to 1 divided by 0 0.407 per second. So all we have to do is take the inverse of that, and we get 2.46 seconds. 2.46 seconds. And, of course, since we only have two significant figures, we can round it off to 2.5 seconds as being the period of this particular pendulum. You can see there's a lot of similarities between a pendulum and an object suspended from a, uh, from a spring. 
However, the difference is that omega is not the square root of k over m, but in this case, it's equal to the square root of g over l. And that's the symbol pendulum.